Yeah, g'day to all you viewers out there. Hope you're all doing okay. Anyway, today, just thought I'd like to show you a vintage electricity meter I recently came across, and uh, this is the device here. Haven't yet actually opened it up or done anything to see if, see if it actually works, so this is it. It's a Ferranti. And uh, 240 volts, 2000 RP, uh, revolutions per kilowatt hour on this one. And uh, in reasonable condition, it's looks like I may have had a little bit of moisture that's got within the case. So I thought we'll just open it up and I'm going to give it a go, see, see what it looks like. Okay, just a view inside the case. Oops, there goes some screws. I hope I don't lose them in this pile of stuff here on this bench. Anyway, uh, okay, having a look inside, yeah, looks like some moisture has got in past the front seal by a little bit. I think they've used lead or something to seal the glass, and looks a bit like lead oxide or something that's deposited in there. Okay, look at the rest of it. So there's the label, Ferranti. I'm sure some of you viewers would probably be able to shed some light on the age of this device. I think uh, Rotocal or Larry out there would probably be familiar with a meter like this one. Anyway, let's have a look. There's the gear train. I can see one of the gears is bit of surface rust on it but hopefully that won't affect the motion of it and we'll just have a look at this load wheel here just by twisting the meter like that the load wheel seems to be free to move so hopefully the coils and everything are okay and we'll wire it up and see how it goes. I decided to dismantle the meter so here's a bit, of, bit more of a look at it here. I've taken the register off. So this is the register assembly here. As you can see, the field coil here has actually been attacked by a bit of moisture in the past. But I have measured it out. And I think it's about 1300 ohms or something like that. So that still seems to be intact. They're probably extremely well made, these coils, and they're probably given lots of waterproof coatings when they are assembled so they should survive it was missing a BA style thread screw in here that's, that's what connects the voltage coil to the load voltage or to, to the line voltage I mean so, so the screw that goes in here to, to connect it to the line voltage block was missing so I had to have a bit of a scrounge in, in the junk pile and I found another screw which I've cut down to size and hopefully that'll do the job in here yeah. perfect I reckon anyway I'll reassemble the meter and put a load on it and see how it works. 
Right now, now I've got this power meter hooked up to a load. I'm just running the load through a variac here. Bit of a quick and easy dodgy wiring setup I've got going here. When your overload comes out of that one, goes to these lamps here. These offer a very good uh, resistive load to the, to the meter, I reckon. So the meter is all ready. So we'll increase the voltage. Here we go, put them up. Yeah, I've got 120 volts on these ones at the moment. And the load wheel is just starting to move now. Alright, increase the voltage up a bit more. So I put 200 volts on these lamps. These are rated at 240 volts. These globes. One's a carbon filament. The other one is like a wire. Uh, I think it's a tantalum wire or something inside those. Anyway, have a look at this. Load wheel's turning nicely now. So looks like this meter is working well. No, there we have it. Hope you all like the video and hopefully soon I'll prepare another one. Well, thanks for watching and take care. Catch you next time.